Hi, Jess. I'm sorry you're muted. I like software muted. Yeah, no, that sounds like me. Hello, hello. So Hi, very everyone. quickly, who are we? What are we doing? Hey, we're just Ron Ramon. We're doing a free pro a JavaScript bootcamp based around the free code camp materials. And when we wrap up today, do you know what wh where we're gonna be when we wrap up today? Oh, I'm gonna be lying down somewhere. No, but home. like in the boot camp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, where are we gonna be? You'd be like, on my couch. Um where are we going to be? Oh, we're going to be done with our second project. Uh, and? Halfway? Is today halfway? halfway? We're going to be halfway <gasps> done. Wow. Right? So we've already hit recursion. What other horrors could JavaScript have for us? Nothing bad can happen. Nothing can hurt us. We're fine. From here on out, we'll just be applying lots of, con lots of new concepts, and we'll be recognizing familiar patterns. If you're catching up, keep an eye on YouTube, youtube.com slash at bad website club. And if you see anything out of sorts, check out our code of conduct, bit.ly slash bwc dash coc and let us know. And very, very important warning for Monday. So what's the worst thing in programming? What is the biggest problem in programming? What does everybody in programming hate even more than uh, regular expressions, which apparently some people don't hate? Myself included. Uh, naming? Oh, no. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Time zones. Are we doing time zones next time? No, we're, we're not. Oh, we're no. not. But we are. Right. So, so f if... Please? No, no. Go ahead. So if you're watching us from someplace in the Americas that does daylight savings time, you all are going to change your clocks on Sunday. And you might think... That's not a big deal. It'll be the same time. It'll just, no, <laughs> no, it won't. Because here in Europe, where both of us are chilling, we're going to change our clocks in, an, in a week or two. So just take a look at the calendar on badwebsite.club. And there's a little Google Cal plugin that you can have. I love everybody was just like, Tina as well. Tina was like, you know, the biggest problem is naming. Uh, and I'm all going, I was just like, debugging, debugging sucks too. And you're not wrong, babe, when it when it's broke and you don't know why it's broke. Uh, but time zones are going to be the thing that might get you just on Monday, because if you're in the Americas, you might join us an hour early. I'm trying to figure that. Because if they spring forward. No, no, be... no. Hang on. So Roman numerals. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the keep keep an eye out for the the change of the clocks. We'll be changing our clocks a week or two later. Okay. I don't even know. Oh, Sean's got us. Sean's just like, oh yeah, the Americas are going to be an hour earlier. Cool. Uh, which is definitely going to ruin everybody's day. Unfortunately, not ours. Oh wait, fortune. So we did binary this week. Didn't love yep. it. And this did project they... will be like binary, but worse, better, different. Different. Today we're going to be building a Roman numeral converter. Now, if you haven't seen them before, Roman numerals represent numbers similar to what what the ones that we most of us use, which are the Arabic numerals, but using different symbols. In this case, letters. So, for example, M is the same as one thousand. CM is the same as nine hundred. D is is the same as five hundred. CD and so on and so forth, all the way down to I, which represents one. Now, what we're going to be doing is building a Roman numeral converter like this example here. Let me make this a little bit larger. Ooh. So, for example, if I put in the net, the, the number uh, 3,003, okay, 200. <laughs> Sorry, I'm unhelpful. That's oh, totally see, see. fine. That's two oh, 100s. It's 100, 100. Yep. So if I put in 222, for example, that's 200, two tens, two ones. I love how Eric is just way ahead of the game to be like, look, look, look. So we're going to need to take that string as input. And we're going to convert it to an up. We got you. We got you. We got you. We're going to get you. Um, 431, for example, is CD 31. This is so cursed. I love it. Do you know what's going to be even better is we're going to be incredibly cruel to the learners. And we're not going to step through this whole thing because this is a project. 
We're yep. going to do some of the algorithmic logic. And remember, yep. an algorithm is just like a thought process for human or machine. Um, and you can think of this as a set of instructions, like uh, most programs are kind of an algorithm. Yeah. And we did a that recipe. a little bit when we, yeah. And we talked about that a little bit when we first built our palindrome checker. Yeah. What oh, we're yeah. going to be doing today is very, very similar in that we're not going to implement the entire app. We will leave it to you, dear learners, to follow the user stories. But instead, what we're going to show you is how Jess and I will approach the specific algorithm of turning a number, an Arabic number, into a Roman numeral. Now, I want to be very clear that this is our approach. This is not the best approach. I don't know what the best <laughs> approach is. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The big thing is we want to show you, A, how sort of pair programming feels uh, yep. to complete these problems. Solved, but also um, the different kinds of logical. And we, we're cheating a little bit because we've done this before. I mean, yes. you're cheating a little bit because you've done this before. I have indeed. <laughs> um, um, but And y'all are grown, so you already know this. But just copying what we do is not going to, like, A, it's not going to be fancy and pretty. Um, but also it's not going to teach you the thing. So we're not going to do the whole thing. <gasps> oh, do you know what, Kristen? I'm so, I hope this isn't fair. Cause like, this is what I was going to do. So a switch statement on East place digit was the, the initial thing that I first thought to be like, oh, check and see what this is. Check it. But I think what is a little bit harder. Oh, you, so you, I think Kristen here is saying place digit like for each of the Roman numeral values. And Lisa's like, oh, what about modulo? We learned about this this week. That cool. might be a really good tool. Can we start there. by writing it? Oh, please. Can we start by like writing it in pseudocode? So just like writing it in like notes? Yeah. What I want to do is approach this from a sort of like, and you remember that I talked about this last time when we did palindromes, I want to divide and conquer here. I want to break my problem into very small pieces and just get small wins going as I go. So to start us off, I've pre-written a little bit of HTML here for us. We need the HTML, the head, the body. Most importantly, we need the script.js import because I'm not going to do the whole thing here. I'm just going to follow on the script. So. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start with console log just to test that everything is working. Hello. Cool. We have our console log working. Fantastic. So I want to verify that console log, and I'm just going to sort of declare a function into the world, convert to Roman 1. Now, we of course, we have a problem. Um, that problem is we don't have a function called convert to Roman. So I'm going to fix that. It takes a number as a parameter. I went with a function function just because I felt like typing it. Again, uh, yeah. yeah, proper functions, raw. Yeah. <laughs> it's now, it's this a is personal kind of, choice. Yeah. So we know that converting to Roman the number one, we know what to expect. In theory, if this project were about turning the Roman numeral one into, sorry, the number one into the Roman numeral, look, we did it. Test passes. So this is something we'll see in programming sometimes. And this is a hard, some, if you ever hear the, the, the term hard coded. Yeah. This is a hard coded it's value. So all this function does is get a spit out I. Yeah. Um, it's never going to change that value. That value is fixed. Brr. Exactly. If I put in a two, I still get I. That's no good. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're going to do. I'm, and now we're going to write some pseudocode here. Declare of let variable string. Then loop from uh, loop while the number is bigger than one. Inside that loop, I'm going to add an i to my result string. Subtract. Did I spell it? Subtract? It's not yeah, subtract. Like spir subtract. Spiritually, it is now. So I don't mean to pick on your code, and I'm not going to pick on your code. I'm going to ask the learners to pick on your code. This is going to do something that's not hard-coded. 
And this is this is something I really, really love. And this is something I have a hard time with, but it's such a good way to learn. What would this code do? What would this code produce? The pseudocode, if we wrote it out in JavaScript, what would this do if I gave it the number six? And I'm, I'm going to make y'all tell me. So if I, Can I go ahead said, and implement it in the meantime. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh, you're going to turn the pseudocode into code. Do it, do it. I was just going to make them guess. And you're like, no, let's show them as they guess. Cool. So while number is bigger than or equals to one. I see some uh, very we'll... informed guesses. So I, oh, my I... objective right now is to get it with working with the number two. Okay. So result plus equals I. Uh, number minus equals one. And then I'll return result. So now I've got it working with two. Happiest Larry. We'll go with three. Three works. Still practically correct. Four is not right. Okay. And I, I got you. I could talk you through why four is not right. So here, effectively what we said is, hey, go like let's start with result. Results an empty string. This is where I'm going to put my, my, my answer. And I've created a while loop that says, hey, if you give me a number that's more than one um, or equal to one, uh, g give me an I and then yep. subtract one from it. <laughs> Stephen points out that happy as Larry is I probably don't know where that came a, from. Is I it was just came out so naturally. I was like, oh, that must be a regional expression. I don't know where that came from. I you apologize. know what? I've I've no, it's delightful. I've never met a Larry who wasn't a delight. I've met uh, exactly two Larrys. <laughs> so you, really, what and Chris is trying to save you and say, like, oh, this has got to be British. No, we're not taking credit for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what we've said is, I want you to make me a machine. I want you to make me a, a program that uh, gives me one I for every value in this while loop. And that's great, but I need an IV for four. Yeah. So can, I think I've got, uh, so let can we do this in pseudocode again? Yeah. I'll delete the pseudocode since we've got it implemented. <sighs> okay. So... Before we check for ones, let's just pull out the fours. So Loop. just check and see if it's more than four mm -hmm. and then print four. I can already see some potential problems with this. I know other folks would be like, but we're going to make small, focused, broken things. Um, and we're gonna learn as we we make these things that that, that feel silly, and as we do it, we're gonna we're gonna sort of feel out. Ooh. So while the number's more equal to four, give us that um, IV thing. Yep, and then we will subtract. And then not one, but four, isn't it? Yes. So I say, hey, if you see a four, give me the character for four. And then yoink, yoink being a highly technical word. So, hey, this looks good. If I have a four, it gives me an IV. What does 44 do? Great question. Let's find out. Just going to delete my pseudocode real quick. Uh, so it's going to give me 10 fours. 10 times four is indeed 44. No, that's it not is. correct. It is not. I mean, Sorry, it is 11 fours. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> I was like, yes, it wait. So this program, what? and this is... Oh. No, go ahead, go ahead. The important thing about programming is, unless there's like a really weird thing going on, your program's going to do what you told it to. Correct. And here, it's not gonna read even mind. though this isn't right, it's wrong in the exact same way we asked for. Exactly. So what happens if we give a five? So five is going to give me four and one, which is not wrong, but it ain't right either. <laughs> Lisa's asking, can we try eight? It's four, four, which uh -huh. we also know not to be correct. But divide and conquer, break into small wins. Let's focus on five because we know from our table here, we know from our table here that a five represents, a v, a v represents a five. But hey, we already 
have a heuristic or a piece of logic that forms a solution here. All right. If you're just going to be getting out smart words, I'd say copy and paste that. Yeah, yeah. We're Absolutely. Well, the number, so let's just say five and do that I, uh, do the V. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be broken in a more correct way. So, so if we say five now. So we've got our five. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. Hey, hold on. What about six? <laughs> six gives us, we do the fives. There are no fours because five, six minus five is one. Then we loop through all the remaining ones, which is just one. VI is six. What about seven? Perfect. What about eight? Great. But what about nine? Okay, look, we didn't have to talk about nine. Well, we can go to our table. We'll see. Okay, IX represents nine. Y'all know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to copy paste. Heck yeah. So nine, nine IX. IX, nine. This is not the only way to do this. This is definitely not the most efficient way to do this. But do you know what's nice about this? Is no. if we sit here all day and do this, it's going to work. Totally. I think that this process, this algorithm we're building, I think this is reproducible. Absolutely. Right? Let's do we Shall we keep going? Let's do 10. Ah, see, 10 is now 9 and 1. We know that not to be right because the x is a 10. You know what I'm going to do, my friends? I'm going to start copy pasting. Yeah, do it, do it, x, do it, do it. 10. Let's the next going. one you want is 40. XL for 40. You know I am going to be awake all night looking at the history of, just in case anyone else is easily distracted while Ramon's doing this, um, <laughs> I had a um, research tunnel right before this. So we, we got on the, we, we, we prep and we chat and we, we talk about how we think you all are so cool right before we start. Um, and I was like, oh, Zero doesn't work. Why? And then notice there's no Roman numeral for zero and went down a rabbit hole about like, well, the Romans knew about Arabic numbers. Why would they have not? Um, so if anybody's in the Discord later, I'm going to be awake all night reading about the history of when different numerical concepts entered different cultural consciousnesses. Because consciousnesses. like... Why 40? What's so special about four? You know that's going to be wild. Ooh, okay. Making progress. <gasps> okay, yeah. Wait, I got to come back. So I was like, oh, I'm sure that Wikipedia will have a brief. No. <laughs> so, yeah, 500, 900, which corresponds to CM. Uh, 900, and then our last one, which is M, which is 1,000, <sighs> M, 1,000. Good golly. Let's give this a try. So Give me 555. Five, 555 five, five. gives me 500, which is Ray. E, L, which is 50, 50 and V, which is five. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Put in a five. 5,555. 5, 5, I put it in. It seems like it works. So 4,000 CD 400, 40, and four. So this wanna, technically I, works. Yeah, we've actually got some tests here that we could try out. For example, uh, if we put in a 9, we expect an IX. Great. If we put a 16, we should have an XVI. I'm just going to play around with a couple of these. XVI, fantastic. I don't mean to look suspicious at you. I'm just suspicious at the world. <laughs> 649. Oh, cool. Okay. So, yeah. Somebody's asking if we're live. We're definitely live. 
Sorry. Hi. <laughs> oh, gosh. Unless folks are also watching this after the fact. We were live and we'll be live again. <laughs> Slightly. 1,023. Surreal. Kelvin, this is going to seem like I'm picking on you, but I'm not because this is me being like, this is so relatable. Kelvin's like, look, I wrote like 2,000 lines of code for this project. First thing, you did this. It works. It's fine. Yeah. The number of times I have said good enough is good enough. And you can refactor this tomorrow. You can refactor this next week. We are going so fast through this material. If it works, it works. Speaking of refactoring. Do you want to? I think we should, because I don't know about the rest of y'all, but having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen while loops that are so similar in structure seems like a co like a maintenance nightmare. By maintenance, I mean when you come back to this code six months, four months. Oh, I'm never coming back week. to this code. When I'm done, I'm done. Like. <laughs> a week later you're going to be on what on you're going to say to yourself what on earth is all these loops and you recognize we we recognize that there is a pattern of repeatable things we have the number that we're going to be subtracting from the number that represents the symbol of the va the value of the symbol we have the resulting roman numeral and we have the symbol itself once again we have the number number the symbol value symbol the value symbol, and the Simple. result. Okay. So what if we extract a function? Okay. I don't... So we, we did this uh, once, twice. So we did this together. And yeah. I'm... Oh, do you know what? So, so we're getting some other suggestions as well. We're going to try to extract a function. But Stephen also points out, because Kristen said this up here, say, hey, you know what? A switch case. I feel like a switch case. Absolutely. Uh, this So this way that we've done this, and I bet if we did want to make everything work and handle errors, like this would take us about 200 lines of code. Uh, I mean, there but, are different ways to do it. What I'm proposing yeah. is that we have... Instead of a result being a string, let's have it be an object. And this object is going to be made up of two parts. The first one is the value, which is okay. the num, the, the, the number, that is the value that we're going to be subtracting from. And the second one is the numeral. That is the Roman numeral that we'll be building. Okay. So what this is going to do is functionally the same thing. It's going to take the number. It's going to yep. look at all the val all the values and characters side by side, and then it's yep. going to to really do the exact same process and say, "Hey, if I see a thousand, yeah, pretty much." Oh, cool. Somebody's asking for the Discord link real quick. Yep, I got it. it. Oh, thank nope, you. You, you are... get right back to doing all the important work, and I will get right back to goofing off. <laughs> cool. So here's what I have in mind. Let's call this process. I'm going to declare this into the world process numeral. Now, remember, we have the elements, right? The number itself, the symbol value, the symbol, and the results. We have our result as our first parameter, our first argument. Then we have the symbol itself, which is M, and the symbol value, which is 1000. Yeah, so my okay. objective is to eliminate this loop and extract it into its own function. Let me give that on. Let me give that a try. So we've got a function called uh, process numeral. Oh, which good takes naming. As an argument to the result, uh, the symbol and the symbol value. Now, we'll just do the loop as we've done before. While result.value, remember that's the number itself, is bigger than or equals to symbol value. Symbol value. Okay. And here it's not symbol.value because we're, so symbol value is a um, parameter. No, symbol, val uh, symbol value is a parameter, yes. Yeah. Just because like if I was if I was new to JavaScript, I'd be like, why is this result.value and symbol value? Because symbol value is the name of the parameter we're going to be passing in when we when we specify all of the symbols and the values associated with them. Correct. Okay. So check it out. 
Now this function does the same, this does the same thing as the loop we had before. Uh, well, it doesn't yet. No, it does already. Until it, until we teach it what all the, until we pass in what the symbol values are. But we already did. Check it out. See, we've oh. done it with, with 1000. I first called the function and then I implemented it. So instead of writing the function and then calling it, I said to myself, well, what do I want this function to look like? So I first called it as I would want it to be called. And then I implemented it backwards. Oh. Oh. So now I'm going to do this co uh, copy paste with CM and 900. Delete this loop. Now I'll do this. So, whoopsie. While you're doing this, this might not feel like it. So it does save us some code. It's it's shorter. It's a little bit more graceful. But one thing that's really, really nice about this is not doing all these loops should also be more performant. Learners who have heard this word before, what do we think more performant might mean? So if a code is performing better, what do you think that means? So Ramon is coming through and just, <laughs> Jane is after my own heart, be like snappier. It's better yep. dressed. It's a little bit more gracious. This is tech often technically true. So the code might look prettier. Mr. Grubbs got, so between the two of you, I think this covers it. Efficiency. So, and Tina is always out here with just like the most person. Tina, I, I don't mean to pick on you. Are you a teacher? Because you should really be teaching. I love the way you describe things. So say faster and it's using less compute. So it's using less computational processing, which also means like using less energy, using le taking less time to run amazing. I was also distracting you because um, I would definitely type all of this wrong if somebody was watching me. <gasps> Tina used to teach floristry. <gasps> I love, love, love when folks have like really delightful, unexpected experience that makes them great at programming or describing programming and teaching people to arrange floral work and teaching people to arrange code sounds beautiful next to each other. Sorry. This is what I love. Jane <laughs> says, it's much easier for a human to read as well, which is a side effect. Absolutely. I so like now the staff here. <laughs> so now we've got our function, all of our loop stuff, all of this symbol and subtraction, subtraction, I don't still don't know. Subtraction. Subtract. Uh, make you smaller. Yes. Reducing. Re um, <laughs> Reduction, like it's a sauce. <laughs> so now we've got a bunch of process numerals. Ooh, Stephen B's got like from the book Eloquent JavaScript, consider that running a simple loop through a simple loop is generally cheaper than calling a function multiple times. Yes, Ooh. but we're still running through a loop several times. Let's, let's talk about cheapness here. Cheapness Ooh. from the sense of computational power or cheapness from my fallible human brain writing and maintaining 13 while loops. I'm going to oh. type something wrong and I'm going to mess something up by put by consolidating, by putting that while loop in one place, I'm telling myself, Hey, if I need to change something in that while loop, I need to change it once instead of 13 uh, times. Sorry. No. And to be fair, you were typing and I was completely wrong where I was like, this is going to be so much more efficient. And Steven makes a solid point to be like, Hey, things that feel like they should be more efficient aren't always. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is me being very, very wrong. This no, is a lighter amount of meat computer processing for a slightly heavier amount of uh, chip computer processing. Yeah. So now we've processed all of our numerals. Does it work? Yes, it does. Check it out. 9,999. <laughs> 9,999. Now there are very likely cheap, like, um, 
uh, uh, more efficient ways to do this. Like, you know, calling a function 13 times probably isn't all that grand. Maybe you could do something like, oh no, do I want to do this? I might, oh, I might do this. I'm sorry, folks. Const <laughs> uh, numeral map. Oops. Oh no, we oh. haven't done no, it's just an object. Okay, okay. I was like, we haven't learned about mapping. Oh, we're not learning about mapping. Nothing. Okay, okay. CM nine hundred. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, D five hundred. CD four hundred. C uh, one hundred. This is this is difficult because I have to be like keeping an eye on oh you're 19. gonna dream about this later aren't you you're gonna be like 900 is L xl is 40 x is 10 ix is 9 v is 5 iv is 4 and i is 1 okay you Oh, uh, Kristen's, Kristen's asking, asking these need to be string. Well, because they're right now we're handling them as numbers, aren't we? Because we're going to add some. Oh. The keys are indeed strings. We haven't put quote marks around them, but that's because when we declare objects, we can either. Um, uh, sorry, we can either do it with quote marks or not, unless there's a space. But we don't want spaces. We just want the symbols. What's up? No, I just uh, uh, JavaScript doesn't need to be so fancy. So, what <laughs> if love instead of calling like... process numeral thirteen times, how about we do a for loop? Let a uh, const symbol in, not of in, because we're looping through the keys of an object. Numeral mapping. And it's going to start at the top down. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I, I hope. I, I, wait, 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 wait. I'm so sorry. I know you're showing off and I know this is very fancy, but we were super specific that we were going to show them one way to do it and then let people explore their own. True. But I'm just refactoring here. All right. Plus, plus I want to know if this works. <laughs> <laughs> so process numeral, uh, we have our result. We have our symbol. And numeral mapping symbol. What am I doing here? Did I? Is it not numeral map? map? Numeral mapping. My bad. Numeral map. Okay. So now we're looping through each symbol. I'm not flexing. No, sorry. you said Flex. You are right, Stephen B. Unless. Oh, perhaps an array of objects. Would an array be better? That's what you get for flexing. Yeah. I'm annoyed because like I like a mapping, but you're right, it's not in order. It does work but it's not an order. But it's one way to do it. I could, if these were in some kind of alphabetical order, look, I'm just, I'm just messing around here. This is one way of doing it. Yeah. I think we're, I think this, I think this is done. I'm All pretty right. happy. I can't, uh, of course, I can't submit it. No, because um, it doesn't. Because the uh, the web app isn't implemented, and I'm not going to do it. No, y'all y'all have to do, yeah, yeah. I've been like, abandon them, make them learn on their own. Uh, so, But we will abandon you for HTML and CSS. <laughs> do we have uh, any questions? Yeah. I mean, uh, I've got to see a question here. Oh, sorry. I got you. So Stephen's like, "Hey, as long as our object is ordered, will it will it will it parse through that object top down?" I think so. Um, I think we got lucky because we defined them in this order. In theory, an object shouldn't have their keys in order, but I think because I defined them in that order, it doesn't matter. 
Oh, okay. We have a question from Kelvin Lin. When doing these projects, whether it's the palindrome one, this one, or the Pokemon one, is it good practice to wrap the input and convert buttons in form elements, even though technically it's not a form for other for people on the other side to look at, but just to convert for your own sake? Uh, I would say only if you're sending ah, for accessibility. Yeah, but for accessibility's sake. In theory, because we don't have a form here, like a like I like to put inputs into forms and what you're doing yeah. is technically submitting a form. So just because we don't see it in this project, I would challenge you to try that out. Kelvin, that was a stunning question. Cause I was like, no, 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 you don't need to do it unless you're sending the data to somewhere. Oh, accessibility. <laughs> yeah. And Steven's saying like, okay, so as we think about objects, are they sort of more flexible in general? So if I'm updating, and in the future, object searches aren't index centric. Because you said we should. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, carry on. Oh, yeah. So, because you had just said um, when this question came through, um, you don't, you shouldn't necessarily put um, value, key, uh, keys and values in an, in, in an object in order. So, this is Stephen saying, oh, is that because it, there's not really an ordered index for this? I think might be the question but, or. So I think it's a combination of two things. First of all, writing an object for this kind of mapping is easy first. Wait. And second, <laughs> looking up a, a an object, looking up a value in an object isn't index centric as Steven's saying. Instead, it's a retrieval. You're like, uh, I give me the one for XC, please. And just instead of looping through all of them, it just goes, let me get that for you. How does it go? <laughs> um yeah Th look this isn't the best way to do that because as you correctly said uh object keys shouldn't have their order be dependent i wrote it in order so i got lucky and we do need that order for the symbols so what you could do is sort is is create an array of sorted numerals mappings this just is I like it to write it this way. <laughs> but there's no there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. There's just different answers. There is one wrong answer. Which so is? we are always super, super chilled out. There's no deadlines. There's no hurry. So your homework is to just start to experiment with this project. You don't have to finish it right away. You definitely don't have to finish it this weekend. But help me think of some empty threats. Um, if empty you threats. just... Uh, yeah, if if you just copy the, uh, if you just copy the code as is the way Ramon and I wrote it, we'll frown really hard at our computers. Oh, I do that all the time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll hold my worst cat up and show him and be like, "Look what they've done! Look, we can't oh, actually no. see your work." No, no, no. He's oh. fine. He loves to look at the computer. One thing I would love to ask you, uh, fellow learners, is to please, um, in the Discord, put up your solutions so that, I, and you know, we'd love to to compare notes with you about like how you came up with your solution. Um, I got to be honest, efficiency is not the name of the game here. Um, so trying to like strive for like the most efficient solution is probably going to be a, an endeavor that tires you out. I would instead strive for readability. I love readability. Let's be honest. Neither of us, none of us is running this on a 1989 Game Boy where you need to be super efficient about every computer instruction. Uh, where on Discord do we post a solution, says Calvin Lin. Um, there is a channel called JS-Projects. You want to uh, post your solution there. Yeah. I think we're good. So that is the second certification project. Remember, if you want to get your JavaScript certification, you need to do all five of them. Next week, we'll be back to do a number sorter. Um, and that'll be a one-parter on Monday because we've only oh. got a handful of lessons. Well, also it's Monday. And I feel like we've been doing a lot of these number sorters. As somebody who does get math fear, I'm done. I'm done. We're done. I'm done. No, no more numbers ever again. No more math, no more maths. Uh, we will return to a humanities-focused future with no numbers. Yeah. 
Well, I think that's it for today. I also want to tell you all, like, you know, great job on getting halfway through this boot camp. Remember to go easy on yourselves. We've been going super fast. We've been skipping a lot of steps in an effort to show you the most essential concepts, but also give you the space to be able to learn to 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 practice those new pieces of knowledge. So don't get too frustrated if you're not keeping up. Remember, we all fall behind on stuff. Oh, there is, right? I would not expect anybody to be, oh, I finished everything up until here. Like that's so much work. And this is so many new concepts. Yeah. Please, please, please. The only homework which we viciously enforce is please have a soft, soft rest of the day and the softest weekend you can. Love it. Take care, everybody. See you on Monday. Bye.